Welcome to another Thursday edition, <laughs> 1 30 p.m. of Hotshot Secret Facebook and YouTube Live. That's right, both. Dual have, streaming. Dual streaming. We have a special guest host today, <laughs> Mr. Aaron Darnell from our R&D. Uh, Kevin bailed on us at the last minute. I think he was scared Troy Kennedy was going to have some tough questions. So uh, we st we've got some backup R&D in, so bring on the tough questions, right? Nah, that's all. <laughs> I think we should have a joke of the day instead. Is, is that what you think? Yeah. Okay. Well, we do have R&D <laughs> in the house today, so um, as always, post your questions below. We'll get to answer those. Um, honestly, we both just sat down right now, so I'm looking at this as we go live. So apparently, the topic of the day is FR3, our favorite little product here that we use in a bunch of stuff in there is tons and tons of science and R&D behind this product, so I'm glad you're here today. And they are too. Thanks. So, <laughs> as always, like and share the video. Uh, follow us on Instagram and YouTube. And as Chris mentioned last week, make sure you click the little bell on your Facebook uh, so you get notified when we go live. Because sometimes we forget to say that. Mm. As you can see, we're in our new set. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. Uh, new set. We promised you this week, but it looks like uh, we had a lot of people out and we couldn't get it done for this week. So next week, hopefully, we will be in the new set and uh, be praying in two <laughs> weeks, as we say it around here. So uh, comment and let us know what you think about the new set. I well, think it's. We'll save that question for next week. It has week. a really familiar feel. It I think. does. It does. It's really. It familiar. is cool. It's. It, we. I've seen some of the videos we've been generating on it. It's cool. Oh, That's cool. Oh, that, the real new one, you mean? Yep, Not this exactly. New one. Yeah, this has got a homey feel, so <laughs> I'm comfortable here. On today's video, we're going to be answering your questions, as, as always. We'll recap what's going on here at Hot Chat Secret. Uh, we'll talk a little product and do a giveaway. Obviously, FR3 today, so everybody's eligible for this one. You can put FR3 in anything, even if you don't have a car. Pancakes. You can put that in your lawnmower. So, yeah, can. everybody qualifies for this one. If you don't watch live, remember, we do do a giveaway after um, for the people that are watching, uh, as Chris and I call it, our syndicated versions. Okay. So go ahead and post. Even if you're not watching this live, go ahead and post your questions below. We'll follow up, get them answered, and give away some after-hours products, too, for those people that don't catch us live. And from last week, I believe we, were, we had uh, Diesel Extreme was our product last week. That's what we talked about. So our winner, our post live winner from last week is Colton Henninger. So Colton, if you're watching live this week, go ahead and send us a message. If not, if you're watching this later, send us a message. We will find you, send, send you a message, and um, get out some Diesel Extreme to you. And let's see, we actually have it listed here. So his post live uh, question was a 2004 Dodge 2500 six speed four x four slight tick when I hit the throttle and at low idle, almost stalling out. Oil change quiets it, quiets it for a few weeks, but it comes back. Number five cylinder might be dumping more fuel than the rest. Any suggestions? Aaron? Well, obviously diesel extreme, but also oil analysis. If it, the tick goes away and then it comes back, it, like you said, it might be dumping fuel, so an oil analysis will definitely tell you the exact same thing see if there'll be think? fuel contamination correct so you're thinking if that cylinder is bad we'll see that we'll see the fuel and it show up in the oil analysis right. but you first said diesel extreme would be the first product you go to certainly if yeah in case, in case it's sticking clean it up get it all cleaned up bowl well, first and then uh on the oil side too we can do some cleaning on the oil side and maybe clean that cylinder seat that ring better maybe possibly but that won't cause a tick right all right. Thanks. Well, lucky for you, Colton. Thank but. you for the question. <laughs> and you're going to get some Diesel Extreme just for asking the question. And it's also the product that we recommend to see if it fixes your problem. So good stuff. That worked out nicely. Did. We got some announcements. What's going on on the web? Well, we have a brand new website. You we should do. probably check it out. Have you guys seen it all? Post up below. Let me know what you think about the website. We know we've been talking about it for a long, long time. It is finally live. We're excited about it. Um, I think Levi's probably scrolling you through it right now. Levi's been working hard. He's had a lot of, you know, anytime you launch something, there's a lot of cleanup. So, you know who the scientist guy is? 
They yeah. Can Photoshop Kevin's face over that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. What else you got so, going on? With that? Well, we have a fantastic newsletter apparently that you're supposed to subscribe to. They are. I'm already subscribed. Oh, I'm not. Maybe I should. You probably should. Probably should. So I can get some news, promos, and giveaways. Yeah. Exclusive offers. Secret stuff that nobody else knows about. Yeah. Yeah, I think the... Uh, um, we're going to run to questions real quick. We always talk about this. We always wait too long to get to questions. So, Trey Sykes is in. Jerry Atkins again. Watch what's up, guys. Uh, Colin Ellison. Was that our winner? No. Yeah. Colton. Sorry. Uh, good morning, guys. <laughs> Brian checks in. Just chatting with Brian. Top fan status. Brian, let me... You run a Facebook page. You should know this. <laughs> We have no control over that top fan badge. That, that is a strictly a Facebook thing. Am I wrong, Levi? <laughs> we don't control it. The funny thing is, I do see your top fan badge, but I saw a post from you uh, on one of our uh, a response to one of our posts a few days ago, and you were trying to floss your badge, and it was already gone. <laughs> I was like, it didn't last long. But apparently, you got it back somehow. So I don't know who you're paying off, but. Uh, Yep. Chris grew a goatee and his hair out. Yeah, yeah. Chris got yeah. a good look. Trey Sykes, <laughs> top fan badge there. How do I put this po politely? This is my favorite lineup on Facebook Live. Good morning, A.A. Ron. Am I supposed to say good morning, Trey? <laughs> yeah, probably. Morning, Trey. Morning, Trey. I haven't talked to you since It's afternoon, yesterday. man, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he's talked to you like <laughs> 10 times already. No, not today. <laughs> well, that was the other just call right before we, we went live, oh, so. he's got you instead. Uh, Sean Tripley, TGIT, favorite show of the week. Thanks, Sean. We see you in here a lot. We appreciate it. Dan Zelton's in. Have questions on this a lot, and will FR3 work on wet clutches like motorcycles and such? We get that question a lot ourselves. That's a tough question to answer. That's a huge tough question. Uh, I'm still stuck in. It's a tough question. Uh, we've done a lot of testing with wet clutch applications. So far, so good. We've had a lot of customers use it with wet clutch applications. So far, so good. But we just don't have enough data that we totally want to endorse it. Um, we'd like to play it safe a little bit. If you want to read between the lines, you can. But right at this point... We're, Our official we're, stance is for now. We need more. We need more R and D on it. Correct. An update um, on the R and D we've done so far has been so far so good. Yes. So that's um, kind of where we stand on that, Dan. Like we um, also didn't used to recommend FR three and automatic transmissions or limited slip di slip differentials. Right. And now it's part of those products. Right. Our gear oil, transmissions oil, so. We want to err on the side of caution when we. There's a are good putting... possibility that it there will be no issues, but right, we're still a little cautious. And then and until we get fully vetted out and we try in multiple applications, and uh, you know, it, and now like we're confident, we can say throw that in any gearbox you want. Like <laughs> we're good, like crap, <laughs> send it, you know. But at first we're like gears. We better try a few different sets first and stuff. So that's kind of where we are with the motorcycles and the, and, and the, and the wet, wet clutches. So, um, Dan, no answer yet, but so far so good on the R&D. It's the best I can tell you. Colton's in. I literally just got in. There you go. <laughs> See, Colton, we converted you from a after-hours guy to a live guy. So, congrats. Um, I hope you heard our uh, answer to your question there. Uh, we advised uh, really trying Diesel Extreme first to see if it helps with the cylinder problem you're having. Um, and you're going to get a bottle. So uh, send us a private message with your address. We'll get that shipped out to you. And Aaron from R&D here also recommends uh, doing an oil analysis too so we can uh, see what's going on with that cylinder. We'll, 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 we can tell from any fuel dilution on there. Colton said he's been using the <laughs> diesel clean for a while and it just didn't seem like it was doing anything. I wish I had my comparison chart here. You got it, Levi? Can you bring up the Diesel Clean comparison chart? Um, yeah, Diesel Clean does not have everything in it that our uh, our Diesel Extreme does. Uh, we're a little more fully formulated, so um, it is worth a shot, especially since you're getting a bottle for free. So 
Let us know how it goes and follow and follow up. Oh, look at that. My mom's in here with the hearts and kisses and love you, and she's a top fan. I'm a kid. Could she pay you the top badge? Yep. Hey, Mom. Love you, too. There's Dorian. What's up, Dorian? Going on week three with the badge. Michelle Shane Johnson carrying that badge strongly, and I believe believe there might be a banner heading out your way because we all try to do our homework this week. David Berg, how's it going, buddy? Uh, Tom Perini's in, says, hey, guys. Uh, could you guys go over the diesel clean versus hot shots? I can try, uh, Colton. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, maybe if somebody in the building's watching, they can run me our comparison sheet or I believe I can bring it up. But let me get back to you on that, Colton. We can certainly do that for you. Um, don't tell you exactly the difference. Brent Hilliard's top fan says, nice new site. Did see a few pages where text characters were garbled on iPhone a few days ago. Yeah, I, I know Scubble too. We appreciate it, Brent. Um, as you know, anytime you have a big website launch, it's a full new website. So we, we are find, finding the little <laughs> issues and correcting as we go. Uh, Trey Sykes <laughs> said to Colton, PM him. He'll get you some info. Yeah, Trey's real good at that too. Uh, Cold, if you want to, if you want to get in touch with with uh, Trey, he can get you all that info. He's probably got it on him right now. Ryan Riddle's in. What's up, buddy? Dan says thanks for the kind of answer. You got it, Dan. No problem. Grayson <laughs> Eves, can you attra- can you address top tier diesel fuel and whether there's any difference in performance from non top tier fuel? There you go, buddy. That's why you're here. That was last week that I knew that answer. Um, <laughs> honestly, I can't remember. I believe there's no ah, my man. specs for premium diesel, Thanks, so to speak, except that it has more lubricity, cetane, all of the things that are in EDT, which maybe we have a bottle of. Uh-huh. Oops, maybe not. Um, the EDD does to the fuel. Uh, the top tier, as far as I re- know, they are still working on actual specifications for like wear scar diameter, CTA numbers, things like that. So as far as I know, the top tier doesn't yet have all of those specifications. But with our new LX4 addition to the EDT, it will definitely meet all of the top tier, the proposed um, specifications anyway. So I missed the first half of that, but I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> so I just made it up. Come on. No, no, I'm just go. <laughs> so uh, okay, my question is on the top tier diesel fuel. He's okay. not. He's not necessarily speaking about like race fuel. Correct. He's talking about top tier versus pump. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, a. I can't remember. The, like a set. Uh, regardless, they're both ultra low sulfur diesel. Absolutely. So yes. you're already going to have a lubricity issue to start with, regardless. Well, the top tier is it's supposed to be the spec. Is, yeah, has marked the or changed the the proposed spec is the 460, just like the European manufacturers. Right. So, and the, now, how do people know if they're getting that or not? More than likely, they're not. I don't think it's a, a thing yet. Right. I think it's still in in works. Um, again, I just touched on it a touch a little bit last week um, while I was doing some market research for the LX4 with the. So. Interesting. So, Grayson, I hope you answered your question. I kind of heard there. <laughs> Roundabout. Um, Chad Myers so is what, in. What was the question Tough again? In. What's the difference? <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, Kyle and Aaron, how you guys doing? We're doing good. Uh, I'm doing a test now with Diesel Clean and EDT, Chad Myers says. Okay. So, check out uh, Chad Myers. 7-3. 7-3. Uh, he's, on, he's on YouTube. He's got a great channel there. So he's doing a comparison or a test with him. So that's that's good to see. Sean's in. How you doing, Sean? Dog didn't eat your homework this week. You know, I actually punted on that, uh, Shane. So uh, hopefully <laughs> that banner's on your way. I'm going to double check today, though. Thanks for the koozies, says Matt Goody Goodrich. I'm glad you got them. FR3 versus Archer. We'll cover that today. Ooh. Toots in. Hey, FR3 by far. But why? Good answer. Good question, Cody Coop. We're going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you exactly why. Eric, yell at the boom mic. You're too quiet. That's what they're saying. So to right. get back to uh, Colton, um, on the diesel clean, the irony is with uh, the power surge, we have a comparison chart here. 
that shows you <laughs> kind of like the all-in-one all formulation we have. Diesel Clean, honestly, is one of the best products that we compare to um, across the board. We've got everything from Power Service, FPPF, Howes, Lucas, Stanodyne. I believe this is on our, yeah, Levi's got it there. So uh, it's actually a, a, a pretty good product. Now, where you're going to have uh, the gap between that and Diesel Extreme, first of all, in the moisture dispersant, they don't have any at all. Um, so it's not going to help you from, from that standpoint. Uh, not only do we have it, we're the only ones that have the DPM, which actually goes down to, what was it, negative 9, I thought? Negative 9 freeze point versus 20 degrees about for the two, two that the FEPF and the standard iron that do have it. The big difference there is going to be on your cetane, which ironically, this is the diesel clean plus cetane boost, and there's virtually no cetane in it. I mean, it's, it's, it's the under 35%, we're over, we're over the 46%. So um, you're going to see a great difference in the cetane between those two products. So that's where we compare head to head with that product. Um, as you can see, the diesel clean is, is a better product on paper versus a lot of the other competition. Um, yet we still have it edged off in, in, the, in those categories there. So hope that answers your comparison question. Chris Mancini's in. What's up, Chris? The bracket racing Jesus. There he is. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to some updates and we'll get back to some questions. I can't keep up with that cat. It seems like he has a new car every week. You mic check? He's just quiet. Okay, sounds yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Speak you want up. me to stand up there and... So dealer shout outs. We are now statewide in Kansas with S&W Supply. So um, there are multiple locations for, so for anybody in Kansas, S&W Supply is now an authorized seller of Hot Shot Secret product. They are in Hayes, Kansas, Colby, Kansas, Hill City, Kansas, Plainville, Kansas, La Crosse, Kansas, Osborne, <laughs> Kansas, Nest City, Kansas, and Russell, Kansas. So. Um, a bunch of locations all throughout Kansas that are now carrying our products. We, we want to thank S&W Supply for uh, really getting our product out to a wide range of people there uh, throughout Kansas. So that's really exciting. Um, shout out to Hell on Wheels Performance in Glendon, Alberta. Randy Harrop up there. He is a monster. If anybody, anybody uh, is in that Alberta area, Randy really knows how knows our product well um, and. Uh, is a good partner of the company here and he is having a one year in business sale on most of his items including Hot Shot Secret products so you can visit his Facebook mm. page or his website at Hell on Wheels Performance Ltd dot ca Canadian site there Hell on Wheels Performance Ltd dot ca or check out Hell on Wheels on Facebook uh, say hi to Randy Harrop Woo. And uh, he's having congrats, Randy. One year in business. You know, Randy. He's, he's an interesting story. I, I I sponsored Randy as a racer originally, and then um, you know trucks blow up, build, repeat, all that stuff. And I think he had just about enough of that stuff and said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a diesel shop. And uh, I'm sure his wife probably thought he was crazy at the time and everything. But man, he's been killing it. He became a hotshot secret dealer right out of the gate. Since then, I follow him. He's adding new product lines all the time. All the big diesel, you know, hard parts, everything you can imagine. Um, he's doing a really good job up there in Canada. So, uh, congrats to you, Randy. Good job. And he must uh, congrats be doing on the one something. year. I hear his name thrown around probably at least once a week See, around the store. So. There you go, Randy. Congratulations. Good. One year one year in business just, just now. That's, so, that's a heck of a first year. So, go check out his sale and, uh, and, and get some stuff from him. So what's going on on Hot Shot Secret in R&D? Well, I'm going to read the list. Read the list. I didn't make it. It says, we've been working on a lot of new things. <laughs> Way to really let that out of the Woo! bag. <laughs> That's to say. Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but we've been working on a lot of new things. Uh, we have a, a small update on the G56 transmission fluid that we've been working, Ooh. field testing. Trace watching. He was just asking me about that. I think he was asking about something else. Yes, about everything. Yeah, let's be honest. True. <laughs> He's asked about it all. So the the G56 transmission fluid has been really good about reducing temperatures. Not as good as reducing noise. Hmm. Uh, and those are known to be loud. They're loud anyway. Like they, it has reduced noise, but are you doing not audible enough. testing on it at all? Well. It's just minimal. Just 
Yeah, it's minimal. So we made up an add-on pack. Instead of formulating an entire drain your oil, put new fluid in. Here's a secret weapon. Drain the touch out, put it in of the secret fantastic ingredients. And the reports so far are the holy smokes, it's almost noiseless. So so is this an add-on pack to our G56 formula? For now, we're still not okay. complete. Okay. We still don't Just have to complete. clarify though. Okay. There's two things here: the reduction in temperature, correct, and the reduction in noise, correct. The formula we have is doing great at reducing the temperature. Yes. Now the add-on is something that could help reduce the noise. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it it will be pull part of the final formula. Final formula, right? But when we're in the middle of testing. We don't always knock it out of the park on the first try. No, usually it's the 14th try or so. Second, fourth. <laughs> yeah, it depends. But well, that's good news. So we've <clears> at the end of the day, the noise. Cautious. As long as the, I mean, the noise can't be good. Something's hitting something. Correct, and it typically means there's more wear. Right. So was there's definite uh, advantages to less noise other than giving you a headache and right and having to turn the stereo. being annoying as hell yeah <laughs> <clears throat> but if i'm not mistaken i know chris once said that the hardest oils to make are transmission fluids so the the win you got with the cooling on a g56 has got to be yeah that was the, the big one that win. was huge right yeah. right off the bat we're like we're done and then <laughs> drop the bike. Like, yeah and, <laughs> and somebody came then, back and still we, making noise well it's it's making yeah less noise but it's it still exists and it wasn't enough noise want, reduction to make Chris happy. If we want best of the best of the best of the best serve then so Chris sent you back to the lab and said keep going until it's silent. <laughs> <laughs> well good that's a good update. So, what so else that's you got? Pretty good. Uh, we are going for our second endurance race with the synchro mesh fluid this weekend. Yes. Putting it to the test. Um, that's going to be exciting. Yeah is it on here? I don't know. I didn't Look. Yeah, I'll update when we get to the I got the paper about two minutes before we shot started shooting, so. All right. Um, lab farm, yeah. We're, we're doing a lot of testing, but it's not exciting testing, so I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Artie's doing a lot stuff. of boring testing right now. Right, really boring. Okay. Well, that's good. And new products i know we have new products but i don't know we've got so many ideas for new products well the rv products are done <sighs> the problem with people like us <laughs> you're never done the long yeah and the longer you, the longer it doesn't go to market the longer we have to rethink it and come up with new ideas so and even once it goes to market we still rethink right it and, so I mean, it, our extinction limiter is what, like our third or fourth generation of that? EDT is about to get a new generation. Yeah. We're constantly reformulating. So if we can improve product, we do. Right. So, But like you said, on a product launch, you try it, to get as much as you can done right. before that deadline. So Absolutely. we're there. The products are ready. They, you guys, just yes. since it hadn't hit shelf shit, you're still tweaking knobs as much as you can. We're still going over it. But gotcha. No tweaks as of right now, but <clears throat> plenty of time. <laughs> All right. In general news... General Hot Shots News, video, it says. Video. Woo! <laughs> That's what it says. So, oh, the new studio. Okay, yes. for Facebook Live, <laughs> other video projects, we're not in it yet, but they have been using it. I think we'll probably show you some examples here soon. I saw some of the videos that they've already come out of it, a lot of our educational stuff that Chris is talking about. And I think the first one I saw was, was real educational. I mean, it was just straight up kind of about getting inside a motor and how it works and stuff. I mean... Had nothing really to do with the Hot Shot Secret or our products or anything. We're really just trying to educate people from the ground up, you know, and I'm sure we're going to have everything from beginner to intermediate to advanced knowledge, you know. So it's going to be a really cool different series that they're running there for the education side. And then we're also going to have a whole, you know, review of our products and how those are used. So we're going to be pumping out tons of content here coming soon. So we're really excited to have <clears throat> the video team on board as well as the, uh, the studio here as well. Uh, and that new series is called Fuel Your Mind. I like it. It's combustible. What if it's an oil episode? <laughs> should it be like Oil Your Mind? It should be. Fuel and Oil Your Mind. So watch for the Fuel Your Mind uh, <laughs> series coming. In events, 
we got Apex and SEMA coming up here in just a couple of weeks. We'll be heading out to Vegas. Um, do they have the booth? 2473. Two, We're in a new location this year. If you're used to seeing us over in that room, we're now in the bigger room. Um, booth number 2473. Come see us. I know for the direct department, we're going to be having a special dealer special that will be a SEMA Apex deal only. So I can't tell you. But if you've been thinking about becoming a dealer and you're going to be out at SEMA, come see me. It'll be worth your time, I'm telling you. Or give me a call. We'll arrange a meeting out there. We got extra uh, uh, offices already lined up out there, some meeting spaces. Oh, nice. So we don't have to meet in the loud, noisy booth and stuff. Uh, we can get you out of there and cocktails and refreshments and everything Ooh. and talk. And, All right. Yeah. Yeah, we got to hook Everybody up. Everybody should just sign up as a dealer for that. You ain't have to sign up a deal. Let's just chat about it. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll take you down to a, get, get, get you off, off the floor for a little bit there. So so that's uh, November 5th through the 7th. Um, Chris will be giving a TED Talk style speech on nanolubricants and the future of nanotechnology in the automotive market. Is that the little teddy bear TED? Like, no, that's not. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, no, I, not, nothing like that, that. That could get out of control. So uh, <laughs> this will be out uh, during SEMA Apex it, on Wednesday from noon from 12 to 12 20 um they have it set up in kind of like the at the top of the stairs there on the second level uh and immediately following chris's speech we do have a meeting room a large room reserved so we're encouraging anybody that have, has any follow-up questions about the nanotechnology presentation to come on down and join us in in the larger conference room and yeah. we can really dive deep into it because you really want to get you know 20 30 minutes up on stage to do it so it's kind of a a top level he's really going to kind of hit hit exactly what's going on with nanotechnology and how we're infusing in our products and so forth but uh if you really want to have a deep dive follow-up and ask the tough questions on the back end of it uh join us in our, our our conference room right afterwards and we'll have all that information out there so um we're looking forward to, to apex coming up here in a few weeks and as you just mentioned this weekend we're really excited because mid ohio here uh, Mid Ohio Sports Car Course, I think is what they call it. Um, it's one of the most famous road courses in America. Here, it's in our backyard. We've partnered up with Summit Racing and BMR Racing on a really cool build that they did on one of our partner televisions uh, with RTM uh, Engine Builder, and they tripled the horsepower on this Fox Body Mustang. It's now in Class Five of this Endurance Series, and I believe RTM is actually. In Ohio today filming some testing and they're gonna be testing tomorrow again and then an eight-hour endurance race on Saturday and an eight-hour endurance race on Sunday um, running all hotshot secret fluids including that new synchro mesh you cooked up Woo. so uh, uh, we're really excited about it I know Brian's probably still watching uh, USMC racing has got a synchro mesh transmission that they put in there you know they're, they're using our, our new synchro mesh in that endurance car as well too so we're excited about this uh, Summit Racing BMR uh, uh, endurance car, and we really wish the guys luck. I'm going to try to make it out there this weekend and root them on and check it out, and um, maybe you can make it too. Maybe. We'll see. We'll, we'll check on you. <laughs> so uh, good luck to BMR. Um, thanks for Summit minutes. Racing uh, helping out with that, and we're, we're proud to really be a part of that project. So uh, a lot of cool stuff coming from that. I think they're doing some sort of documentary on it too. It's been filming for a while. So you'll see a lot more about that car coming up. So back to the questions and answers. Uh-oh, I see uh, <laughs> I see Troy Kennedy's in. You better get ready, buddy. I don't know the answer to that one. All right, Sean Tripoli <laughs> says, it's starting to get cold. If I use the winter blend additive, will I still need EDT? Also, will LX4 be in the winter additive? Well, um, oh, well. And when you mean the winter blend additive, I think you mean our diesel winter anti-gel. You don't have a bottle over there, do you? I do not. Um, the answer to that question is no. The formula inside our, our D-WAG, as we call it around here, diesel winter anti-gel, is the same formula as our EDT plus uh, hey. anti-gel in there. So, no. If you're using our, our, our D-WAG, you're good to go. Now, as far as the LX4... This is where that boring testing that I didn't want to talk about comes into play. We are making sure that it doesn't affect the DWAG performance. It's just tricky stuff. It's not fun. Yeah, it, I mean, 
we know it can a, blend. We know it can blend fine mm-hmm. into the EDT. Right. So we're going to be replacing that lubricity additive. It, it blend. It blends fine. There's no compatibility issues, but we're we're still testing on the pour point, cold filter plugging point. Right. Right. So. So. Get, we, get kind of a half answer so there for you, Sean. The answer is. Still in the lab. Yeah, we're. But they're working if, fast because winter's coming. I know. They're waiting on you, bro. I know. I'm working. I'm working on it. A little faster, man. So. Kevin's it's, watching. It, oh. Kevin's oh. too busy to be out here, but he's watching. Yeah. Hi, I see how it is, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, we should. If things go well, it will be incorporated into the diesel winter anti gel. There you go. Troy Kennedy says, I'm here. What I miss? <laughs> Were my questions Back ever talk. answered for lubrication and Muncie transmissions? Well, Troy, maybe that's why Kevin dodged what's, today. What's the exact question? Troy, what's the exact question? So I mean, I don't he's not like really here. I'm not really talking to him, so it'll take a while to get that back out. But I believe the question was, what kind of transmission fluid, right? Okay. In a Muncie transmission, and I think he, the, the second part of that was, or the same transmissions as in modern manuals, which I don't know how those are the same transmissions. Bananas and apples. Right, so I thought too. <laughs> and oranges and pears. I mean, there's so many different types of transmissions that you can't just lump it all together. So what kind of transmission um, fluid for a Muncie? Let's start there. That gets tricky, like always. Uh, those are 1960s transmissions. They had conventional oil back then. The issue with a lot of a lot of people using synthetic fluids is that there's no rubber seal for the front bearing carrier, so some of the synthetics seep through and get on the clutch and make it slip hmm. and flywheel. Um, some reports say that the synthetic works fine if, as long as the transmission's not worn the heck out. So I would probably say, and it, it's usually like a gear oil, a 90 weight gear oil. Um, our G56 transmission fluid would work really well on that. There you go. Um, I, I think there wouldn't be an issue. Trid does ask, where's his favorite tribologist? I'm here to induce sweating. You ain't gonna make him sweat. You make Kevin sweat, but Aaron just go. Eh. Meh, I don't know. <laughs> Meh, I'll look it up. <laughs> uh, Trey, Janez Pitts, I think yeah, he's my dude down there in uh, Best One, I believe. Wants to know why our oils treated with FR3 smell so darn good. I'll tell you. <laughs> funny story. I think I mentioned this before, um, a couple weeks ago. Um, I was sitting in a golf cart with. Uh, uh, Larson Miller from Firepunk and a truck goes by us into the staging lanes and he's like I didn't know he was running your oil I'm like and the is, crazy thing is like we hadn't even like sponsored the guy he had a problem with his oil and he just switched over to ours like we were there so we <laughs> gave him some oil for his fix so it's not like he knew he was a guy that we worked with right. but he could smell it and then he, he can smell any truck that's running our oil because he smells the FR3 <laughs> exactly Larson's like the oil whisperer, you know. Like, <laughs> I could smell. Now, I love the smell of FR3, but like, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, we're at a racetrack with like 500 diesel trucks there, and he was like, "That thing's running hot shots." I was impressed. So, uh, what he wants to know why our oil's truth FR3 sm- smells so darn good? Why is it? Uh, I can't give away secrets. Why? Why does FR3 smell the way it does? Is it the esters in it? it like is, you know all the raw materials. It is not. It's not. So, okay, when you're working with this blend of FR3 and the formulation on this, is there, is there, is that one ingredient that you're like, that's where that smell's coming from? Exactly, there it is. And you can't tell us? No. What? Well, it's patented, right? Is it one of the patents? I signed a non-disclosure agreement. Let's get you fired today. (laughs) Let's get you fired on live on Facebook. It is the cleaner. It's It's the cleaner? It's the cleaner. Yes. Huh. I would not have guessed that. Yeah, it's a... And it's a bio-based cleaner, so renewable, good for the environment. Biodegradable, renewable. Yeah. All the goodness. Top, top stuff. Fantastic smell. And, and and nobody else is using that. No. Why? It's just too expensive. Too nice. Everybody uses junk. Yeah. Because if somebody else were using that chemical, would it smell like FR3? It would. Really? Oh yeah. We've, huh. we've even tried to mask it for 
other projects that we've done right. and it i know we have a, a, like, a, a, a our gun oil has a fr3 base to it like we have a some, yeah, it's got some formulation yeah. of fr3 and that was one and of the issues with the gun oil it's like man we gotta make and this tried and tried and like well if we add 99 percent of the masking agent we can almost get rid of the smell but it it's there right it's if you like it i love it news. i love the smell of if you too. don't now diesel extreme edt yeah yeah I don't think I've smelled the LX4 yet. Does that stink? It's different. Huh. But FR3, it smells good. Like, we should make <laughs> cologne and, like, shampoo with it. And there, there's a new line I'm item for you for the you, website, Levi. I'll get the beard oil. Beard oil. That's right. I'll, I'll have that done by Christmas. That's right. If you want it. So there's your answer, <laughs> Janez. The FR3 is due to the, the cleaning chemical in it, which I didn't know. I learned that today, too. And it does smell damn good. Brent Hilliard says, seeing the FR3 on screen, about to switch to your green diamond with the FR3 over current T5 uh, 15W40 for winter with minimal towing. Six liter, mostly southern driving, with some trips to Ohio. Mm. Would it, I benefit it, from going to the 5W40 over the 15W40 he, he for winter? He would benefit by not coming to Ohio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's colder up here. Yeah, but to uh, answer your question, yeah, you want to go to the 5W for a colder uh, yeah. climate. Simple as that. I mean, yeah. just based on the winter weight, cold starts, all that type of stuff. Agreed. Yep. Check. Check. No arguments. And the bearded medic agrees. All right. Uh, Oliver Prince. Hey, fam. Y'all sending out them FR3s. I'd like to try some of my 6.0 Power Stroke, see how it works with injectors. Well, good question. Um, the... 6.0s and 7.3 with those Huey injectors. FR3 is a great product for it. We recommend the, the Stiction Eliminator. You can slide that. Or slide the sexy one in. Oh, yeah. You're going to stick with the new bottles. There you go. We, we so certainly... you want to do the Vanna? Yeah, go for it. We certainly recommend Stiction Eliminator first on the 6.0s to, to get the injector really cleaned out. Um, just like about all of our oil products, the Stiction Eliminator has some FR3 in it. So part of this product is already in... The Stiction Eliminator, um, we it, it just provides a deeper cleanse, you know, with the Group Four, Group Five esters, um, doing a really high-end cleanse of, of the system, specifically with the 6.0 Huey injectors. So, if you haven't already flushed them out with Stiction Eliminator, I would recommend that first, uh, Oliver, and then followed up with the FR3. FR3 will get a Huey injector clean. It will just take longer. Correct. You concur? I agree. There you go. So let's speed up the process and let's run some Stiction Eliminator through that 6.0 first. And then uh, FR3 is kind of your keep clean on those injectors. So as long as you're running um, FR3 in your oil or if you switch over to our oil that has the FR3 infused, you may have to go back to a Stiction Eliminator once every year or so just to do a nice flush through. Um, but the FR3 will, will do a great job keeping it clean. Um, but as a first time cleaning, I'd, I'd go to the, the heavy duty Stiction elim Eliminator first. Absolutely. You're getting pretty good at this advice. Yeah, I've been around the block a little bit. <laughs> Probably not going to need anyone from R&D anymore, huh? Anything on shock <laughs> oil yet? You know, that was on that was on uh, Chris's homework list. It was. Did he pass it off to you? Of course he did. So have you been doing some research on shock oil? A little bit. So tell tell us. No, uh, there's nothing to tell. It's shocking. shocking. Uh, I don't have any. I don't have any news. No news. No news. Been doing some research? A little bit. What have you learned? Learned that it's... Complicated stuff? It might not be as easy as uh, I'd thought. Chris said, when he was talking about transmission being the hardest oil to develop, he said I shock oil is the second hardest. I would say, the, well, it could be... Opposite? It might be opposite. Shock oil could be the so toughest. You want, shock oil, you want to react the same at stupid cold temperatures or stupid hot temperatures. Right. And to react the way through the widest temperature range possible. Right. Um, it's challenging. Good luck with that. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, it's 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 going to be a tough one. It's not going to be a hey, this is done this week or next month or. So it, there's in the your queue. update. It's in the queue, Michelle Shane. It's in the queue. But R and D's got it. They're researching. Don't have an answer quite for you yet. So, FR3 isn't Molly. Oliver, no, it's not. We'll talk about that in just a minute. 
Um, Stacy Cole's watching. Hey, Stacy, how you doing? Matt Goody Goodrich says, my washing machine got a big dose of FR3 by accident. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> I found out after my clothing smelled like FR3. Well, that'll do it. It'll probably take you a while to get that out, too. A touch. Does the washer wash better? <laughs> <laughs> the squeak went away. <laughs> Trey Sykes, uh, the Hotshot Secret 1979 Dodge Omni, I know as the Omnivore, Correct. is racing Sunday for the SEVWA Pro Championship. Currently leading in points. I'll try to bring it home. Well, good luck, Trey. Um, I don't know if you can find a picture of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for it. But uh, it's a good-looking good looking hot rod. So... Uh, Good luck to Trey in the uh, Pro Championship this weekend. Yeah, there it is. There's the Omnivore. Yeah, buddy. What's that, Ron? <laughs> he, he races the heck out of that thing, man. He's, he's pretty nasty in it. Oliver Prince, I kind of like to know the breakdown of what FR3 is. Yeah, we'll get there. Josh Lawyer's in here. What's up? Richard Nicoletti's in here. You'll see me next week. King of the Street's coming. That's right. That's right. Jersey's coming in town. Jersey's making it to Ohio. You got any more than free giveaway scripts? Nothing there. Um, any other so social media platforms you guys are on? Levi? We are on Instagram. At Hotshot Secret. Yeah. We're on Facebook. Duh. Where else? <laughs> YouTube. YouTube? Ooh, YouTube's. Twitter? Are we on Twitter? Eh. Not active. But... We're there. You can find us there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we're we're we have we have a pin. So really, our where we're really active is Facebook, uh, Instagram, and we're really beefing up our YouTube channel now too with all the new Great. content. So that's where you kind of want to follow us, uh, Colton. Hey, would there be a benefit to put FR three in my H pop? Want does to, Kevin uh, teach want, you these awkward long pauses? He does. Because you both we, we do have this. to say, that's a good question. Uh, hmm. A little more information, just like the 6073 high pressure roll prompt, or what, what, what are we talking? What are we talking, is Bearded Medic? Yeah, he's what, got a... Is that... Is yeah. That, I think he's got a 6 The application? I believe so. Yeah. Reduces wear. Might go always. So benefit. So of course. There you yeah. go. There you go, Beard Medic. Yeah, I just didn't know if there was a different application other than. Yeah, it takes me like four minutes to get any question well. out of them like that, so I'm used to it. <laughs> Dan Yost is in. Larry That's Turner's in. Rod Zolman's in. How you doing, guys? That's a world record. Uh, this weekend, uh, speaking of the event updates, Hot Shot Secret Cash Days here at Pacemakers. So come on out. Um, it's actually a noon starting time rather than evening starting time. So uh, bring the kids. They're gonna have a uh, trunk and treat. Trick and trick and. Trunk and treat? Sounds good. Trunk and treat. Candy in the trunk. Uh, <laughs> power wheels racing the whole night. We always have a good time out there. And I um, want to thank Rod Zolman for all he does out there at Pacemakers as well. Added FR3 to my power steering fluid change. Turning 37 inch tires like butter now. Differentials and transfer case are quieter too. Now I'm out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing when people. People often like will call us and they'll ask about dosage levels and stuff. And I always tell them when you're buying an FR3, like buy a bigger bottle than you need, because if you've got like three ounces of FR3 left over, it goes a long way, man. There's a bunch of stuff you can put it in. So FR3 kind of goes everywhere. Yeah, half of my house and garage is. All right, so this FR3. is a synchro. I think this is a synchro mesh update from Matt Goody Goodrich. Used it on a on a used and abused TKO 600. When we drained the fl fluid out of it, it looked like gear oil synchro mesh cocktail. Replaced it with the Hot Shot Secret synchro mesh with FR3. He, question mark. He can't remember. Is there FR3 in the synchro mesh? There is. There is. Of course there is. Of course there is. Once the transmission is at operating temp, transmission shifts good. No grinding in the gears. Held up to a weekend of road racing at VIR. Sunday was a 40-minute race. I held third most of the race, pulled a bonehead move, and got beat at the line for fourth. 
We'll put it through another text test next weekend. Three day weekend of racing. Awesome. Thanks for the update on that, Matt. I, I, he was one of the guys I remember. Yeah. Trey was, Trey was working with you yeah. at the Synchro Mission there. Yeah, I talked with him a little bit. You even bit. talked to him? Yeah. That's good. I just didn't have his name because it's always a. It's Matt Goody it's Goodrich. Always a, it's always a Trey here, here. Yeah. Here, this is the lumberjack. I'm going to hand it over to somebody else. Right. So It's a 269 horsepower road race Fox body. Cool. It's going to be similar to our thing here. I think he's putting down a lot more horsepower now, but Five. road race Fox body, you can't beat it, man. Like, you don't... Well, you can if you came in third. Oh, well, maybe if you made I'm a better synchro mesh. I agree. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's... Uh, Michelle Shane Johnson spilled EDT in the garage last night. Wife walked up this morning and said you spilled EDT in here, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. You can smell that yes. forever. I noticed I could smell my oil after fluid change. Yep. Uh-oh, Troy Kennedy question. You ready? Mm. If the HSS rear gear oils don't have that typical stank, why does the transmission fluid still smell that same horrible smell as regular trainee fluid? I think it's like apples and coconuts, isn't it? Maybe. I, like I say, I need like a Troy to cipher. I never understand there, Troy's questions. I don't understand the question either, except <laughs> that I think he's saying that. He's saying that the transmission, transmission fluid smells like transmission fluid, and gear oil, the gear oil like, doesn't smell like gear oil. I think is what he's saying. If so, if the, the short rear, version is. He says the gear oils don't have the typical stink. Right. Why does transmission still smell like horrible smells, regular training fluid? Because we, Because training fluid smells bad. Yeah, it does. It's kind of sweet. It kind of, the, the, there's certain additives that honestly work really well. Um, we've tried to get away from them with different technology. There's some that work, some that don't. And when we do our fabulous turn the blender on and see what happens and do a bunch of tests uh, some of the older additives still held up better than the newer additives I have your glasses but you look smart with your glasses on yeah. I can't see with them <laughs> they're just they're just for show so that's the transmission fluid has some of the similar additives that the other conventional or normal transmission fluids that you're used to smelling um, our gear oils we've kind of steered away from some of that older technology right well, there you so. go uh let's see brian fennel's in here what's up brian another one of our buddies from usmc racing i'll have to bring my car up there sometime bring it up here man it's a long ride but we'd love to have you up again rod zoma says it's like hot sauce i put that <laughs> on everything that's right <laughs> all right so let's get into well it's suddenly bait and switch us here with a with a two-step but we're talking about FR3 today. <laughs> so let's talk about the benefits of FR3. I know one of the questions we had earlier um, oh, was regarding the Molly. So maybe off the top, let's address that question that was out there. Molly or molybdenum, um, I'm going to give you my, my that's, R&D. That's pretty, that's pretty good pronunciation. I, I just call it Molly because I can't whip it out. Say it. Like that. No. <laughs> Why? It's not going to happen. So a lot of people know Molybdenum is Molly. Liquid Molly is a popular brand who, you know, that's where they put their science in. Right. Um, Molly is a, it's a hard metal. It's a, it's, 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 it's a high and ex expensive chemical that people use for uh, lubrication purposes. Right. Um, and the science behind it does work. There, there, is a, there is a reason why people use Molly. It's an older technology that's been around for a mm -hmm. while, and the way Molly works is it's it kind of it's like plates, kind of looks like a plate. I remember like the best way uh, Chris has often explained it to me is if you take like a deck of cards, and you have a deck deck of cards on a table, and you're to slide your hand around on a deck of cards, you get you're able to move freely because the cards are sliding amongst each other, and that's how the molybdenum works. And so it's a bunch of plates. There's a downside to it that it can break down prematurely. Whereas right. the technology we use rather than molybdenum is carbon. And our carbon nanotechnology, it's at the nano size, is... It's already broken down. 
a tiny <laughs> little itty bitty little tiny little carbon balls. And so rather than having a uh, say that the, you know if this table here was the the surface of your metals, when, when you know when your metals and your components of your motor, you know under a microscope, all these metals are, are rough. So we've got valleys and stuff to, that oil is almost too thick to get down into lubricate right. and protect. So the molybdenum almost acts like plates and bridges over that kind of stuff. So we're sliding over top of it. What we're doing with the carbon technology is our little carbon balls are actually finding those nooks and crannies, whether it be a worn motor with, with you know, wear metals, wear marks in it, or a brand new motor off a of showroom floor that's got machining marks in it, the carbon technology is going to find those little nooks and crannies, fill those little tiny voids that give us a flat film layer basis. And the flatter of a, 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 a basis you can start to build a film layer on, the better you have. And then comes in our nano lubricant, which almost, you know, provides all the lubrication you need on top of like a field of ball bearings is the best way to explain it. Like a, if you had like a, a million marbles on the floor, that's how we are pr reducing the wear. Whereas the molybdenum is plates that can actually break down, run into each other, and slowly crack and fall inside the little crevices and stuff. So we're actually filling everything with marbles till it's flat. That's the layman's term. Go nerd on me. That's it. That's it? Car I car nailed it? Cards and marbles. We're Cards playing. and marbles. <laughs> that's all you need to know. <laughs> that's a, really, what's, is, that's, what's the science that's, going that's, I nailed it. You nailed it. I'm done for the week, man. You are. You can go to sales, I'll go, I'll go to R&D. Sounds good. What do we need Kevin for? Some, we don't know. To watch, our, to watch <laughs> us, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that answers the question on the Molly. A, he's going to get a top fan badge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I know we had a question earlier about the Molly, um, and that's why I want to just up top. Yeah, and but on top of that, Molly is more, more of an extreme pressure additive as well, where FR3 does not necessarily... Uh, have a good outcome on the extreme pressure testing. Right. I mean, it, it's more of a, a normal wear instead of, oops, we have no oil, we're in trouble. Right. So. All right, so let's get into some of the um, what benefits of FR3. What's somebody going to see when, when using it? They can't get that smell out of the washing machine, for <laughs> That's one. That's one thing. <laughs> Don't smell it in the washing machine. Uh, the biggest one is wear reduction. That's my favorite. Uh, I believe we say it was what, it's 42? like 40, 43%. Right. And what test is that? That's G133. Is that the the ball? No, that's the four ball test. The four ball this test. This is a HFRR reciprocating rig. Oh, so see, I know that. I see, I can't even told you what that stands right, for. Right. So Psh. it's, so, yeah, what was the question? So the HFR reciprocating <laughs> rig is, is the test we've talked about before. It's the same test we talked about when we talked about the lubricity in the LX4, correct? No. Okay. The G133 has uh, more pressure. Oh, okay. But it's the same it's pin on surface. It's, yeah, correct. But it puts it's more pressure on it. It's a different test. Yeah, so but exactly. we're, we're measuring the protection of the metal. Correct. Okay. And when using FR3 in that test, it reduces the wear on the metal by 42%. Yeah. So you're extending the life of your motor, the components of not just your motor, but like we said, we put this in gears, transmissions, I mean, differentials, um, hydraulics, you name it. Anywhere we, we need some lubrication for metal to metal, you're going to reduce that wear, which is going to extend the life. It's going to improve the efficiency of, of, the, of the item. Or okay, that's, that's my second favorite. Okay. It's horsepower. Horsepower. <laughs> that's everybody's number one favorite. <laughs> it's, is my the horsepower. it's my second favorite. So, but. horsepower, and I'll tell you the story behind this product. I know um, we've got Firepunk Diesel's logo on this product, which is good and bad. We, <laughs> we love Firepunk. Don't get us wrong. Um, but often people think this is just a diesel product because they see Firepunk Diesel on it. Right. Uh, really what that is is we did all our initial testing down at Firepunk on this product, um, our, our dyno testing. When we'd already done all this other stuff. We knew the wear reduction of it. Um, and obviously, when you're reducing wear, we're also reducing heat, which allows us to make more, more efficiency or more power. Well, we wanted to document that. Um, I'll leave us get an old video that Kevin loves. <laughs> and uh, and so when we were down, at, we went down to Firepunk. And honestly, this is like really before we had a relationship with Firepunk. Right. 
and I, I, I've told the story a couple times. I don't know if I've told it on our Facebook Live, but uh, we were recommended to go down to see Firepunk because they have a dyno down there. They're big. They're big diesel guys. We're like, okay. So we called and booked some. Never heard of them. <laughs> who are these guys? And um, we, we booked some dyno time, and of course now you know we sponsor all the Firepunk. We're we're good friends and stuff, and we kind of look back and laugh on that day because on their end of that phone call is like. Oh, here comes one of these snake oil companies that want to borrow some dino time. I can't wait to see this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, sure enough, we go down there, and as, as you can probably see in the video, we, we put two, two of their trucks up. Uh, um, we used a competitor X versus our product. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, I was so, waiting for it. The before and after yeah. dino pull. So we do, uh, you know, three to five dino pulls, take the average, pour FR3 in, uh, idle it for 30 minutes. And then do three to five pulls after that and take the average. And uh, we, we picked up horsepower every single time. Uh, the funny part about this is Firepunk, as everybody knows, is that it's just the peak of diesel performance. I mean, these guys have figured out everything you could do. And almost, little do they know, they, all of a sudden we pour a little bottle of fluid in their <laughs> oil and they're picking up horsepower. And I'm like, what the heck? And, you know, by the end of the day, like half of the Firepunk teams over there, like all around the dyno screen, can't believe in what they're seeing. And really, it was the birth of our relationship with Firepunk. And, um, you know, they were proud to have their name on our bottle. We, to this day, it launched a huge R&D relationship between the two companies. You know, we right. really beneficial for both sides. And, um, you know, we don't pay them to have their name on that stuff. They just said, heck, this is the first time we've ever had, don't like, <laughs> you, know, you know, seen anything that actually works, an oil out of can pour in that actually has real-world performance and stuff. Right. So it's just been a great partnership ever since. But it's funny that this is this product, the FR3, is where it all started at, yeah. and it was just from the dyno testing on there. So this is dyno tested, proven, like time and time and time and time and time again. Matter of fact, um, Rich just told me one of his dealers was on like a dyno competition. This is a gas, it was on a mm-hmm. Mustang. And oh. um, they have it on video, they're sending the video to us. But um, I guess he did some polls on, on it and like, Won the won the competition or something, but then on a whim threw some FR3 in while it was still in the dyno and like pulled like four percent more like right there, you know, in front of everybody. On and we're like, send us the film, you know, because the more more we Absolutely. get, this better. But I challenge anybody who you need a virgin motor. By virgin motor, it means it can't have FR3 in it before Aura oils because honestly, we don't know how long FR3 stays in the motor. But once it's in there, it's in there for a while. Even if you do a couple oil changes without it those little carbon nanotechnology will bond to the motor and give you benefit long after you've had it in in, in the vehicle. Um, so far after we had a vehicle that we do some crazy science of what happens to a vehicle with no oil that used to have FR3 <laughs> in it. So that's another day. But, uh, <laughs> but for any of you that have access to a dyno and you have a vehicle that has never had FR3 in it, I highly recommend um, putting our product to the test. They're... I'm a motorsports guy. Aaron's a motorsports guy. We all know that there's all these hard parts and oils. Now everything claims horsepower all the time. And you know, throw this throttle body spacer on, and you're going to get 50 horsepower. You know, or, right. or this, this cold air intake is going to give you 120. It's like there's a lot of. I just gained 947 horsepower on a 210 <laughs> right. horsepower. Motor. There's a lot of crazy right. claims out there. Um, the claim we make for, for our FR3, I, I think we say 3 to 5% horsepower, up to 5% on it. We have gotten a lot more than that many times. We are conservative on, on what we claim on it. And that has been at different horsepower levels, from 300 horsepower applications up to 1,000 horse, horsepower yeah. applications. We see that gain every single time. So I, I put us to the test. If you have access to a dyno or if you have a buddy that's going to go on a dyno soon and has never had an FR3 in the motor, I promise you it's not going to hurt your motor, if anything. If anything's going to help it. But do some pulls with it, throw the FR3 in. We, we do say we'd like to let it idle for 30 minutes or so because you gotta get time for the oil to reach everywhere, bond to the metal. Though after a couple pulls, it kind of seats yeah. pretty good and you'll start it, seeing it, horsepower it keeps, go up. It each, still pull, goes, yeah. it, each pull starts going up the, and up and up. The 30's a minimum. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we continually see gains for And it just keeps going. For a little bit. Yeah, so I challenge you. And if, I, send us a video, I'll tell you what. Anybody who sends us an FR3 dyno test video, We'll give you a banner and a two quart of FR3. That's like what, like fifty bucks, hundred bucks, something like that. That's a lot. It's enough FR3 to do tons and tons and tons of stuff. So 
Uh, but we want to see them. So uh, I challenge anybody out there to access the Dino. Let's do it. Let's do the FR3 Dino test. And um, well, let's put let's put our science up. New let's, campaign. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, uh, call us out. Call us out. I want to see it. Uh, you know, we're not scared of it because we see it time and time and time again. So it is truly a what we do here from R&D formulated science research and then prove it on the dyno and then prove it on the track. We've got the fastest Duramax, Cummins, and Power Stroke in the world all running Hotshot Secret Adrenaline Racing Oil, which is infused with FR3. Just saying. <laughs> I, I have here. no rebuttal. <laughs> so, what are the other benefits we get from FR3? We have, um, it improves shear and oxidation stability, film strength, and especially friction reduction. When we talk about the film strength and that it improves film strength, this is one of the products that people talk about. Uh, if you get a little blow by, right, this can help on, on blow by because not only is it going to have a cleanser in it that's going to clean your cylinder walls, maybe release your rings, get them to seat better against your wall, but we're actually uh, strengthening the, the, the film strength of the oil itself so it doesn't right. slide by. Isn't that right? You're supposed to nerd this stuff up for me. Eh. How does it increase the film strength? That's a Chris question. Wow, you're punting. I am punting on that okay. one. Okay. Oh, yeah. We know it does. Right. And Chris won't tell us. <laughs> Chris will tell us he's not here. But <laughs> it, is a good, it is a good product to use if you're no, having some blow by and you're trying to strengthen your film yeah. strength. This is why it's also a high performance product used in racing oils and everything is we really want to get some good thermal stability, uh, oxidation, and you know, um, increase the film strength to prevent blow by, right. which maximizes horsepower. Ooh. This means your oil will stay in spec longer, stay cleaner, and protect your engine, making it last longer. Um, what's it good in? Conventional oil, synthetic oil, um, applications, diesel, gas, small engines, motorcycles, mm -hmm. um, lawn mowers, any type of lawn equipment, big farm equipment, yeah, hydraulics, it's awesome, man. No we ideas? heard somebody mention earlier about the uh, uh, power steering. It's great power steering. Across the board, we usually recommend dosage-wise 5%, is that right? Yeah. So. Which is 1.6 ounces per quart, but 1.5 is what we put is on Is it really 1.6? Yeah, it has. We always say 1.5. It's easier math. <laughs> so 1.5 <laughs> ounces per quart of oil breaks down to about 5%. So regardless of your application, sometimes it's tough. I know um, a lot of the big trucks we deal with that are lifted with big tires and all that stuff, and they kind of get groaning, you know, power steering. Your power steering reservoir might be this big, you know, so sometimes it's like a cap full is all you need, and it goes a long way. So 5% uh, on about anything you ever want to use it in. Um, diffs, hydraulic systems. Any other questions? Wow, we're about over time. So let me wow. clean up the questions. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Mike Beard said he had a trend, enormous amount of borax and soap. It seemed to help, I guess, cleaning it up. Yeah, Bearded Mike does have a 7.3 when he's asking what the H-prop. Okay. And Brian Fennell says the HSS sneaker mesh is in our USMC Racing uh, TKO 600. Four races, fluid still looks great, trans shifts great. Good to hear. Thanks for the feedback on that. Sean Tripoli, I prefer to keep Stiction Eliminator in my oil every change. Am I losing any benefits of running just FR3 added? Sean. I guess my That's first question, question is going to be, are you using Hot Shots oil, which already has FR3? Um, obviously, if you are, then you're not losing it. You're not losing any benefits by not adding FR3. Let's assume you're not. Then adding Stiction into every single oil change? I mean, normally our two-step approach on oil, we recommend running Stiction Eliminator if it's the first time on a full clean-out dosage, which is four ounces per quart of oil. Once it's cleaned out, your next oil change, we recommend you to switch over to FR3 for at least two oil changes worth. Um, and that's one and a half ounces per quart, or 1.6 ounces per <laughs> quart of oil on, uh, on the FR3. You can go two oil changes, two whole intervals with FR3 
before going back to Stiction Eliminator, which even when you go back to Stiction Eliminator, at that point, we just recommend a maintenance dosage, which is two ounces per quart of Stiction Eliminator. So the question is, you, you feel comfortable staying with Stiction Eliminator the whole time? You're not going to hurt anything. You, you're certainly fine doing that. We just try to be a little more honest with our customers in that it's probably a little overkill on the cleaning side. Um, we love you to buy Stix Eliminator. It's one of our most expensive products, but you can save yourself some money by switching to FR3 uh, and get nearly half the dosage, or twice the dosage out of it that will go. I know price point it comes out to being about two to one where you can get two more oil changes out of running FR3 as you would get one in Stiction Eliminator. So um, just from a price conscious standpoint, I would recommend going to FR3 for your second and third oil changes and then going back to uh, Stiction Eliminator for, for the, that fourth one, technically. Would you agree? Sure. No comment. I mean, no, no. There, before the, <laughs> yeah, there used to be the two-step treatment of Stiction when there was an FR3. Right. Which was be, like half dosage. It used dosage. to be the maintenance dose and half dose, and then we sort of replaced it with the FR3. Right. So, so now it's almost a so, three-step. It's kind of like <laughs> full FR3, yeah. FR3, half stiction. Or. Or. or whatever. Andrew Hall says, I love running FR3 in my gas or truck. I've seen so much improvement since I started running it. Great to hear. You know, it just reminds me of something we did mention in here. And this is going to get kind of nerdy, and you're going to tell me I'm either right or wrong about it. One of the things people first start saying with uh, FR3 that we hear back is uh, the reduction in temperature, operating temperature. <laughs> we see it all the time. Now, first of all, it's kind of obvious. Like, the name of the bottle says friction reducer, which I don't like that name so much because it's it kind of categorizes it with a lot of products, and it does so much more. That's It's so much far past just a friction reducer. But it certainly does that. It certainly does that. So... By reducing the friction of the motor um, through the nanocarbon technology with the nano lubricant on top, reducing wear down by 42%, your heat comes down. Now, the crazy thing that I know we're still kind of looking at, I talked to Chris about a few times, is that the the temperature reduction that we see with as as the as the temperatures come down cannot be completely explained by just friction reduction alone. It's, it's just kind of, I remember Chris saying, that's like, I mean, that's way off the charts just for reducing friction. Mm -hmm. And what it kind of comes down to is the carbon technology itself. Carbon is a conductor of it, heat. Yeah, it dissipates it as well. It dissipates the heat. So the fact that this, and what makes it unique in the FR3, I guess we should have started this at the top. The three stands for three <laughs> patented technology. We have three different patents on this product. That's the, that's the three in the FR3. One of the patents really is to keep the carbon suspended in the oil. Correct? The nanocarbons. Yes, we can get rowdy. There's actually a lot more than three. I know. I know. <laughs> but that's what separates us from what Correct. a lot of people are yeah, doing. That's, so we've advanced this carbon so technology, that the nanocarbons, that far, because a lot, of, a lot of people know about it. It's great stuff. They cannot get it to stay in solution. They cannot. It's like the nanocar nanotechnology has a, had a bad rap to begin with because it never stayed in suspension. Right, period. and it just wanted to fall out. And so you have a bottle that has all this fabulous settling, and like, well, that's yeah, it sits there for pointless. two days, and it's and all it's gone. Yeah, and you can actually see the carbons at the bottom right. of it. So that's what separates our carbon technology, and that's why we got a lock on this market and a lock right. on the nano stuff. People, we have big companies calling Chris all the time, saying, "How are you guys doing this?" And we say, "Ha ha, <laughs> not telling you." <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's one of our patents, and and right. and so getting back to where I was going with that. The fact that we are, have the capability of keeping the nanocarbon suspended through the oil, we believe, through the best we can tell in our science, that's actually helping with the reduction in temperature as well. So it's right. not just that we're like reducing friction against two metals that are creating heat, but the actual heat that is inside the oil itself as your, as your motor heats up, the, the carbon inside the oil that's suspended in the oil is actually effectively like sucking the heat out of the oil, which is crazy. I mean, it's just bananas, but that's where... That's where the extra. <laughs> that's where the extra this reduction has been a comes. Pretty fruity uh, episode. Well, you're here. <laughs> you don't get much more than that. So, my point being, that's normally one of the first people, things yeah. people report is that they can't believe how how much cooler their, their engines are operating right. at. 
and I just like to say it's not only because of the friction reduction. It's a lot to do with the carbon nanotechnology in there too. Oh, Troy Kennedy's back. What happens if I put FR3 in an AC system instead of PAG oil, PAG oil, or in place of mineral oil? For example, Sandin uses PAG. Older systems use mineral oil. Hmm. We have not yet tested that technology. All I know is it says do not use an air conditioning unit <laughs> on, our, on our tech data sheet. So. Well, there you go, Troy. Uh, I would not recommend it. My answer is this is not necessarily a base oil to begin with. It is an additive. It is an additive, right. So, apples and coconuts again. Uh, gotcha. Well, something. it's Troy. He's, he's coconuts. Okay. So, <laughs> Matt Goody Goodrich says, how about FR3 versus liquid Molly Ceratech, ceramic nanotech, supposedly? I don't know anything about that one. I don't either. That's a good one. Look at him. Um, Liquid Molly Ceratech. Um, ceramic Nanotech. We will look it up, Matt. Um, we ain't scared. We love looking at new stuff. If it's if it's from Liquid Molly, I know. It's, I, I know they they are trying to by just by looking at some of their product line. I, you can tell they're trying to get away from just being in Molly because Molly's yeah. kind of getting to the point where it's kind of like cool in the 90s but like the technology's past it i feel bad for them because they're kind of pigeonholed with their brand name you know <laughs> but clearly if they're doing a ceramic uh ceramic nanotechnology then they're right. probably trying to move on to something else so um but i don't think we've tested it i have not tested it. so we'll look into it we'll buy some we'll test some matt and we'll get back to you we don't know anything about it uh, Michelle Shane Johnson, I was doing the same. I switched over to FR3 last oil change, picked up 1.2 mile per gallon and more response. Sticks and Eliminator is good every few changes to keep clean out, but FR3 is equal to using EDT versus Diesel Extreme. It's a maintain between changes. Maintenance is the long key, is the key to longevity. Yep. We talk about the deep clean and the keep clean, you know. The, the one we two. have a really good customer. Base. I know. We're going to start going they, live and just let them answer questions. Right. Post and answer yourself, <laughs> folks. We're just going to kick back and drink beer. You know? <laughs> we should have an episode of that. I'm good with that. Uh, Troy Kennedy says, I think uh, Stiction is supposed to be used twice a year, FR3 every third oil change. Not quite correct, Troy. We don't like to say how many times per year just because based on people's different mileage. Um, but we say every third oil change. So... That could be in a month for some people, and it could be two years for others. But uh, FR3 in two of the three oil changes. So Stiction, FR3, FR3, Stiction, FR3, FR3. They're all answering for me. I love it. <laughs> when is the Hotshot Seeker Salesman Representative Dealer School and Convention? Good question, Troy. That might be coming up. We're working on our education department right now, and part of it's going to be dealer education, so we can do that. Artie Moppin's in. What's up, Artie? Sean Tripoli runs 13K a month, so I'll pay more running sticks to keep my 13 liter clean. I hear you, Sean. If you want to, you're all good with that, man. Um, that's a lot of miles, but I'm telling you, um, you're not going to lose anything by switching over to the FR3, you know, um, in between that. Maybe you try, and rather than going two FR3s and back to a stiction, do a stiction FR3, stiction FR3. At least break that in half. You're going to save yourself quite a bit of money. You got to remember, we, you're gonna you're gonna give us more money if you're buying the stiction. So we're just being honest with you that when we formulate these products, we formulate to the exact peak of the performance that you're gonna get out of the product, and that's why sometimes we say, you know, a lot of people think of a, of, of products like ours. If a little bit's good, a lot's great. Not necessarily with ours. I mean, uh, some of these other products, like the one we talked about earlier with the Diesel Clean, they have a very low cetane in there. So if you pour a lot of that in, it gets better because you're going to get up the cetane level of that product. Well, with <laughs> ours, we've already maxed out the EPA's allowed standards, and you were already at that curve where you're starting to hit the point of no return. So right. that's how we formulate all our products. So same thing with Stiction, same thing with FR3. Again, you're welcome to keep running it. I, I suggest for your own pocketbook. <laughs> if you got extra money, I accept money, too. If you just want to send me money instead of buying FR3, then, uh, then we can do that, too. So, And he says, Trey says, if it works... Keep it up. That's right. Engine oil runs around 153. <laughs> not sure what it, what it had before you started. He just says, when you change the oil afterwards, it looks like you blew your head gasket. 
but it seemed to work good on my VW. I don't know what he means. I think he's talking to... Hmm. And Bearded Maddox says, guys need chassis grease, U-joints, etc. Well, well, just saying, Kevin came over for a little update from R&D oh, to sales that. this week. Yeah. And he mentioned stuff about grease. Yay. So there's your secret. Down the road, we're talking 2020. Don't don't bug us about it because yeah, they've got enough in front of them. But Sean Bearded Medic, Grease is on, coming. It's on the way. Grease is coming. So we're over time. Um, thanks for all the questions. You kept us overly busy, and you kept him from. Uh, we're only over time if you count all of his awkward stalls. We would have been right. perf perfectly on time. <laughs> Take out those 42 minutes. We're short. <laughs> <laughs> we got 17 minutes to go. So let's give away some FR3. I want to give a bottle to Oliver Prince. Earned a bottle. And uh, Grayson Eves earned a bottle. So Oliver Prince and Grayson Eves, send us a private message on our Facebook page uh, we'll, with your address. We will ship you out some FR3 so you can try it yourselves and see what all the hoopla is about and why we put this stuff hoopla in everything. Sounds bad. Meh. Meh. I'm saying hoopla just sounds like BS. So you have any closing comments from the R&D department? Uh, shout out to Jen, maybe. She's not today. She's shout out to Jen. Thanks for keeping R and D in she's, line. <laughs> she's uh, doing some fuel mileage testing. Oh, she's not happy. Right. Well, thanks so, for uh, doing some testing for us, Jen. Yes. Anything else? Hey. All right. Well, good luck to our Mid Ohio uh, BMR Racing team this weekend. Uh, come see us at Hotshot Secret Cash Days on Saturday here at Pacemaker's Dragway in Mount Vernon. Uh, and, and until next week, I see we'll still be here next week before uh, another week or so before SEMA Apex. So we'll have probably have an update on that. And maybe next week we'll finally fulfill our promise and be in the new studio. So keep your fingers crossed. We hope to be over there. We'll see. Right. No promises. Probably two weeks away. But <laughs> in the meantime, check out our website, uh, brand oh, new website. Me. I know we've already got some really good feedback about it. Shoot us a message. Tell us what you think, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Um, and I think it's really cool. It's got a lot more information and a lot more is coming to it as we load it in. So um, thanks to everybody who worked so hard to get the website up uh, and running finally, and we're, we're proud to have it up. So until next week, have a good weekend. We'll see you next Thursday. Oh, don't we have a – you don't have a tagline sign No. Hmm. Fish out. <laughs>